Gia Sophia, my second response. And uh, for those of you who are listening for the first time, Hagia Sophia is a Christian cathedral. There are two worlds of Christianity. There's one world of Christianity where the Quran prohibits us from being friends and allies with those Christians. And there's another world of Christianity in which Allah says about those Christians that they will become closest in love and affection to us. And so the cathedral of Hagia Sophia belongs to that group of Christians, the ones who will be closest in love and affection to us, not this one with whom we are prohibited by the Quran from being their friends and allies. This is NATO. This is NATO and Turkey is a member state of NATO. Do I have to remind you of that? And so Hagia Sophia is a Christian, Orthodox Christian cathedral. I call these Christians Orthodox Christians, and I call this side Santa Claus Christian, except Allah, mashallah, there are sincere, some sincere Christians amongst them as well. So they should not be called Santa Claus. But most of the others who support a man marrying another man, they're Santa Claus Christians. And so this cathedral belongs to them, and it was the most famous cathedral, house of God, a cathedral, like a masjid, like a synagogue, like a church, except a, a cathedral is a very big church, like a masjid jamia. But this is the most important cathedral of all for them, after Jerusalem. And this had functioned as their most important important cathedral for 1,000 years. This is Hagia Sophia. Where is it? It is located in Constantinople. Why do I use the name Constantinople? Simple. I follow a man named Nabi Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him. And he referred to the city as Constantinople, and so I follow him and I refer to the city as Constantinople. If you have a problem with that, get lost. <laughs> then we, we, we pointed out that 600 years ago, the Ottoman Empire defeated the Orthodox Christian Patriarch and his forces in Constantinople, the city, and after defeated them, the first thing that they did when they conquered Constantinople, the Ottoman Sultan Muhammad Fatih was his name. He was given the title Fatih as a conqueror. Uh, he took this cathedral, that's the first thing that he did, he took this cathedral and he converted it into a masjid. And my response, I don't know about the others. I don't comment on other scholars, no. I responded based upon my study of the Quran and my study of Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, who not only did he give a contract, a, a charter, to the, to the Orthodox Christians in the monastery of St. Catherine, I think it's called, in Sinai. He did it and he has his stamp. His, 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 he could not sign, you know, with his knee. He could not read and write, so there's a stamp. And it has been re recognized all through this, the ages, recognized. A, this is a valid document, a treaty or, or a contract, a charter, to the Christians. Among the things mentioned by Prophet Muhammad is the security that we will ensure the security of your houses of worship, protect your churches, your, your cathedrals and so on. And then he gave another charter to the Christians of Najran. Again, there is this promise that the followers of Nabi Muhammad will protect your houses of worship. This is our prophet. 
But uh, in addition to what is there in the seerah and in the hadith, there is the Quran. <laughs> yes, there is the Quran. And we responded because of the Quran and because of the seerah and the sunnah of the Prophet, of Islam, we responded by saying that what the Sultan did in taking Hagia Sophia and converting it into a masjid 600 years ago, 1453, we said it was shameful. We said it was disgraceful. We said it was manifestly sinful. And uh, there were Muslims who were sincerely puzzled. They could not understand why is Imran using this kind of language. They did not have the knowledge. And to such people who act in ignorance and who supported the government of Turkey, the NATO state of Turkey, supported what NATO's Turkey did in changing the building one more time into a masjid, as though once was not enough a second time around. And they supported it. And they could not understand why do I use this language? Shameful, disgraceful, manifestly sinful. Well, let me say to them, and I'm also speaking to the Orthodox Christian world, and I'm getting emails, and I'm going to read you one today that I got from Greece, from a sister in Greece. Yeah. Uh, Allah speaks in the Quran. It is his word. And he says in Surah Al-Hajj about the Christian church, the Christian cathedral, the monastery, and the Jewish synagogue, and the masjid, that these buildings must be protected. That's what he says in the Quran. And he expects people to fight to protect them and preserve them. These are his words in the Quran, that you must fight to protect the cathedral, not <laughs> to take the cathedral and change it into a masjid. No, the word of the one God. This prevails over everything else. It prevails against over your bogus Islamic law. There is a valid Islamic law and there's a bogus Islamic law. The Quran is supreme. Every Christian must know that today. That for the Muslim, the Quran is supreme, not some bogus false Islamic law. He says, this is the Arabic. And if Allah had not caused some men to be deterred and blocked by others, to be forcefully restrained by others, then the houses of Allah in which his name are mentioned frequently, his name is mentioned frequently, these houses would be destroyed. And he mentions the church, and he mentions the cathedral, and he mentions the synagogue, and he mentions the masjid. And he says that his name is mentioned in the church. His name is mentioned in the cathedral. His name is mentioned in the synagogue. His name is mentioned in the masjid. If you are in Armenia, you must be smiling now. If you're in Greece, you must be smiling now. If you're in Russia, you must be smiling now that the Quran says, the Quran says that the name of the Lord God Most High is mentioned in your church and in your cathedral and in your synagogue and in the masjid. And the Muslims have a duty to fight, to protect your buildings, your houses of God. This is the Quran. And the Quran is supreme. Everything else must submit to the Quran. 
And the word of the Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, supports the Quran. The charter to the Christians of St. Catherine with monastery in, in Sinai, the charter to the, Muslim, the Christians of Najran from Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. And so you must be smiling now. <laughs> the Christian world is listening to me. You must be smiling now that I have used this language while others could not understand. Now that the verse of the Quran has been recited, let them go and study. Let them see what is seek, what is the meaning of this verse which I have just recited. And what are the hadiths, what is the conduct of the Prophet? Are they in harmony with each other? Okay? You get the system of meaning. And so now let me read for you uh, the email I got, it made me smile. <laughs> uh, and it is from a sister. And she's Greek. And she's Orthodox Greek. And she's half Pontian. And from she's Jerusalem. I don't know what is Pontian, and I don't know where is Jerusalem. But she's Greek. And she lives in a Thessalonica. Thessalonica. I've heard about Thessalonica. I've never been there. Maybe one day you might invite me to come and visit Thessalonica. Uh, and this is what she said. I just want to thank you about Hagia Sophia at the first. She said, our life is full of hate for Ottomans. Oh, and Kamal, we hate him so much. She said, <laughs> she said, we can't forget. We can't forget, she said. We cannot forget. And the Turks make it harder for us to forget. That's their conduct. She says, they are so blood Thirsty. I'm happy to read this letter from an Orthodox Christian sister. Listen to her words. She said they are so bloodthirsty. She said they feel so proud for everything they have done to the Christians. Usually they dream of to conquer Thessalonica once again. What's wrong with them anyway? She says, Muslims, they hate icons, statues, and so on. But they have icons, statues of Kamal everywhere, so he's like a saint for them. <laughs> this is Kamal Atatuk, Mustafa Kamal. She says, so we hate Muslims. We really hate, hate Muslims. Because for us, a Muslim is a bloodthirsty Turk. That's a Muslim for us. A Turkish people who are bloodthirsty. Are you listening in Turkey? Are you hearing what your sister in Greece is saying about you? It must get you worried. Instead of responding to her with hatred in your heart for her, why don't you think? Why is she writing this letter? She says, we don't know other Muslims, no. She says, we learn about ISIS during these last years, and we watch them on TV cutting people's head off. And when they do that, we remember our genocide again and again. And we watch a low one. He watch him with the Kurds. We watch him what he did with the Syrians. We watch him what he did in Libya. And then we remember our genocide again and again. This, this letter makes painful reading. And then she goes on to say, you are the first light of hope for me. I smile with your video. I think the only thing that we can be 
in disagreement with his woman's rights. <laughs> she, she says, I am not a feminist, but I grew up in democracy and I like it. And you know something? It would be beautiful if this is the only thing that I disagree with Muslims because this is not hate. She goes on to say, you can be the bridge. I'm sure of that. Greek Orthodox Christians would be happy with your Muslim students, like a new breath. I can't talk about other, other Orthodox Christians because I'm Greek, but I know my own people. You need to leave as many students in this world as you can. This would be your legacy in the world, a great and a respectful legacy. And listen to these last words of hers. She says, and I agree with her, oh yes. She says, and Hagia Sophia will connect us together. That is the Christian and the Muslim. Hagia Sophia will connect us together. Uh, I go more than that. I say Hagia Sophia will connect the Ummah of Nabi Isa Islam, Jesus, with the Ummah of Nabi Muhammad Islam. Hagia Sophia will connect us together. So she says, and Hagia Sophia would connect us day after day. We will find your students day after day, and your students will make our hate to disappear. This is your legacy. And you can add something else. You can find this useful. He says, we Greeks, we have an Arabic word in our vocabulary. It's a haram. We say harami, harami. And in, in our language, we use it as a curse. Probably they don't know the Muslim meaning, but when we use it, we use it when someone makes something, done something unfair and is harmful to someone. And if we wish that that unfair act to return and hurt the people who made it. I'm not going to mention her name, but this is a very, very weighty, weighty email that I got from this sister. Uh, in Greece, in Thess Thess Thessalonica, and maybe one day I'll visit Thessalonica. Hmm. Thank you, thank you, my sister, for your email. Um, uh, there are other, I'm getting a lot of emails uh, from Christians, yeah, but not only from Muslims. Uh, there's another email now, but uh, this is from a Muslim brother. And he says, uh, uh, I'm sending this to you, Sheikh, only as a thought for contemplation. He said, the world, especially us Muslims, we are caught in a debate whether it was right or wrong for the Cathedral of Hagia Sophia to be converted once again uh, to be a masjid and to now become center stage in the world, center stage in the media. He said, a true thinker, one with the ability to reflect and to analyze, has to suffer an amazing amount of stupidity and ignorance people's uneducated opinion coming from those who support the Turkish decision to convert the cathedral to a masjid. This is very harsh language. My question, however, is why is no one questioning the timing of this event? Why has it occurred now? Of course, this is the metaphysics of the event, in the events that are taking place in Akhir Zaman, and only few can understand the underlying meeting, meaning. It's not sufficient to understand where and how, but more important to understand 
when, and why. And this is what I want to do now, briefly. Um, this is only my second comment. I have more to come, inshallah, but uh, I only have one hour and a half is already gone. I want you to, <laughs> to think, and this is my analysis I want to suggest with you, because I am a scholar of international relations, international politics. I studied in two universities. And uh, I have always held the view that the Ottoman Empire wage 600 years of relentless, bogus warfare on the Orthodox Christian world in order to drive a dagger deep down into the heart of that Christian world, not this one, not London and Washington and Paris, that one. Drive a dagger deep down into their hearts so that they'll hate Muslims, hate, hate, hate Islam, hate Muslims in order to sabotage any possibility of friendship and alliance between the world of Islam and that Christian world in Akhiru Zaman. And uh, 600 years of bogus jihad, because the only time that the Ottomans were not fighting the Christians was winter time, because they couldn't fight in winter. So in winter, they'll be storing and preparing themselves for when the springtime come back on the battlefield. So 600 years, that's what they did with the Christian world. Bogus jihad, because our prophet said. And uh, you'll probably be hearing this for the first time. Yes. Uh, these words of the prophet, an eminent, very eminent Egyptian scholar of law wrote a book on war and peace in Islam, war and peace in Islam. Uh, his name was Dr. Muhammad Abu Zahra. And I, I read his book, Rahimullah, when I was a teenager. And I couldn't believe it when I read this hadith. Do not be anxious, said Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, to meet the enemy on the battlefield for war. Do not be a bloodthirsty people wanting war, lusting for war. No. Wait until the enemy attacks you. And when they attack you, wait until one of your men is killed. And when one of your men is killed, then put the body in front of them and ask them, is there no better way for us to solve our problem than fighting? And so a Muslim is not someone who should be anxious for warfare, planning years in advance to attack Constantinople. That's what Sultan Muhammad Fatih did. He planned for years in advance, meticulously. And uh, the, uh, the, <laughs> the Byzantine Empire was becoming smaller and smaller all the time. Until all that was left of the but Ottoman Empire was the city of Constantinople. Nothing else. Nothing else. And the patriarch, the Christian, Orthodox Christian patriarch, which is men in the city. And the Sultan Muhammad Fatih, preparing for war for years in advance, meticulous preparation, yes. Until eventually he surrounded the city. If you are besieging a city, <laughs> I think the it must have been about 200,000 men he had. If you are besieging a city, and these people are inside the city, outnumbered, there are only about 9,000 men in the city. On Judgment Day, you'll get the figures. On Judgment Day, you'll know whether or not this is true. Yeah. Would that <laughs> Christian people 
in the city, in the city that is besieged, would they be waging offensive warfare? Would they committing aggression against you? Or are you the people who are planning for war against them for years in advance, and you have now besieged them? Huh? Which one is the aggressor? Is this a just war? Is this jihad? <laughs> when our prophet said, put the body in front of them and ask them, is there no better way for us to solve this problem? I want the Christian people who are listening to me who have hatred in their hearts because of Ottoman oppression, let them hear for the first time what is Islam. Let them hear it. The Orthodox Christian patriarch in Constantinople, he knew he could not stand up, stand up against the Ottoman Sultan. So he sent a message to Rome, to that Christian world, for help. Please help us, because they could not fight on their own. Rome sent, the Pope sent a message to him. Yes, we will come and we will help you on one condition. That is, you have to abandon your faith and you have to join our Christian world, our Western Christian world, in which the Holy Spirit comes not only from the Father, but from the Son. That's the Western Christian world. The Orthodox Christian world says, no, 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 the Holy Spirit comes only from the Father, not from the Son. What answer did they give Constantinople to Rome? <laughs> that answer is written in gold. The, the Orthodox Christian world responded to Rome and said, we prefer the turban of the Sultan to the hat of the Cardinal. Yes. We prefer to be defeated by the Turks and become the, subservient to them than to change our religion and join yours. This was the answer. And so there's very plain and clear that the, the Ottoman army was the offensive army. And the, the Christians were defending themselves. This is not jihad. This is not jihad. And our learned scholars who have not studied this subject properly, I speak gently to you, I speak respectfully to you, because I don't want to have to see you on Judgment Day in shame and disgrace, no. You should go back and study this subject, that this is not jihad, because Islam does not permit offensive warfare. The Quran says, if the enemy is suing for peace, you must reciprocate. So what did the Orthodox Christian Patriarch of Constantinople do? He offered to the Sultan Muhammad Fatih that we would pay a tribute to you. Yes, instead of fighting. This is asking for peace. And Allah says in the Quran, listen to what Allah says in the Quran that if they seek peace, you cannot fight them. If they want peace, you cannot fight them. If they want peace, you must reciprocate. That is Allah's command in the Quran. And they wanted peace. The Christians wanted peace. They did not want war. But the Sultan decided, this is Muhammad Fatih. He decided maybe in ignorance, I don't know, I wasn't there, that he would defy the Quran, which ordered you to protect the synagogue and protect the church and protect the masjid, and defy the law of war in Islam, which says you cannot fight when the enemy does not want to fight, the enemy wants peace. You cannot fight. And he waged war on Constantinople. And then he defeated them. So on that day, if this is the army which is offensive, waging offensive warfare, which is prohibited, and that is the one which is defending itself, which is permissible, and people die in that war, who are those who are shuhada? Who are those who are martyrs? Now, if you want to be honest for once in your life, 
if you want to be honest for once in your life and you don't want to stand up on judgment day with disgrace on your face i'm sorry to become so agitated forgive me the ones who were defending themselves from attack an offensive war is being waged against them unjustly and they died they are the shuhada they are the martyrs take that and go back and study before you come with your scornful and disrespectful and sinful comments and so why have they done it now they did it at that time they converted the cathedral to a masjid in order to sabotage end time friendship and alliance between muslims and christians but before we proceed further <laughs> there are some who are uh, may, may Allah forgive them because they, they they don't have the knowledge yes they said oh no no the sultan bought the masjid the, the cathedral he used his own money to buy the cathedral so what's wrong with that sheikh my son my daughter i expect you to think allah sent the quran not to sheep and to goats allah sent the quran liqaumi yatafakkarun he sent the quran to people who think tomorrow i'll be gone from this world i'm now 80 years of age how many times do i have to beg you to think hmm? if there was a sale a contract of sale <laughs> and the orthodox christian world authorized someone to sell because if this is my house and you sell the house without my permission that's a bogus <laughs> contract isn't it the orthodox christians build the cathedral belongs to the orthodox christian well so then if the orthodox christian was sold hagia sophia to sultan muhammad fatih okay and you have a contract of sale <laughs> and on judgment day and you standing before allah and you confirm yes you saying to allah yes the, the he bought he bought hagia sophia and yeah uh, allah says where is the proof ha to burhanakum <laughs> this is judgment day and you say well here is the contract and then allah says to you this is a bogus contract this is fake what are you going to tell him are you going to tell him you're wrong <laughs> no you must think if there was a contract of sale then the patriarch in constantinople has remained there from that day to this day he's still there up to now at least he he nobody else he must confirm has he ever confirmed <laughs> the patriarch the orthodox christian patriarch in constantinople has he said even one single word to confirm that there was a sale we sold the cathedral hmm? no and he cannot say that because if he say that the whole orthodox christian world will lynch him they will stone him he cannot say that because it's a lie i could use more harsh language than that it's a lie it's a stinking lie no christian in the world will ever support that statement that he the sultan bought so why do you accept it a, a sale with himself buying from himself is that a valid sale hmm? and if the orthodox christian denies that there was ever a sale the orthodox christian patriarch in constantinople if he says no no that's false there's never a sale guess what 
guess who is going to lynch him? <laughs> so that's why the Orthodox Christian patriarch in Constantinople is so silent on this subject. My son and my daughter, just do a little bit of homework and you see that this is a fake document. A fake document that the Sultan bought this cathedral with his own money. I don't want you to stand up on Judgment Day with this on your neck, hanging from your neck. Because Allah will ask you for proof and you have no proof to give. Excuse me. So why? Why have they again changed the, uh, the cathedral to a masjid for the second time? Why at this time? Answer, they have done it at this time because Turkey is a member state of NATO. Full stop. Full stop. I need... <laughs> I don't have to go beyond that because I have students who have the capacity to think, Masha Allah, Masha Allah, I have students who have the capacity to think. The government of Turkey, the Supreme Court in Turkey, has acted on the cathedral at this time to transform it into a masjid once again because Turkey is a member state of NATO, that's why. It is a master plan at work. And it should not be so difficult for you to read between the lines and to connect the dots. They are preparing for war. And it would be beneficial, it would be helpful if they could use a Muslim people a Muslim country, which is a member state of NATO, as a Trojan horse. First of all, get the whole world of Islam to support Turkey. This is the new leader of the world of Islam. That's why Turkey acted as she did over Adnan Khashoggi. Get, get the Muslims now to consider Erdogan to be the new Sultan, the new Khalifa. This is the new hope for the world of Islam. So when the war begins, you'll have lots of Muslims going to fight on this side, the side of NATO. That's right. Like sheep, unlike goats, unlike cattle, they'll be fighting on the side of NATO. And get the Muslims to have hatred in their hearts for the Orthodox Christians. Not Washington, no, 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 no. Not London, but for Moscow and for Athens and for Belgrade and the Orthodox Christian world. And so when Muslims have hatred for these Christians and all the Muslims are supporting Erdogan, now the war can take place. It will now be advantageous for NATO. When will the war start? We know because our Prophet ﷺ has prophesied. The day is going to be a great war. He called it the Malhama. And my Christian audience, which is listening to me and viewing this video, you know that you call it Armageddon. Armageddon. We are two people, the Christian and the Muslim. We are two people who have the same view, that there is a great war which is coming. Yes, the Jew also believes it. But we are a two people who have something else which combine us, which bind us together. And the Jew does not have that. What is it? The Christian who is a Christian. Not all Christians are Christians, no. <laughs> there are Christians who follow Santa Claus and who believe that a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. <laughs> but the Christian who is a Christian, he believes as an article of faith that Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, is coming back. He's coming back. 
And when he comes back, he comes back in person. Yes. If you are close to him, you can hug him. And the Muslim believes the same thing. Nobody else on the face of the earth, nobody else has this belief as a part of the religious faith. The Christian in the West is increasingly moving in another direction. Most of them are moving in another direction. That no, Jesus is not coming back in person, not in flesh and blood, coming back in the spirit. Hmm? So it's being a diluted, <laughs> it's a diluted version of the faith. So these two people have this in common. They believe that Jesus will return and they believe that there's going to be a great war. But there's something else that connect, connects us together and that is Constantinople. And that's why this book was written. That's why this book is written. Constantinople in the Quran. Before you pass judgment on me and my views, read this book. Come and critically assess this book and respond to it. Constantinople in the Quran. And if you're an Orthodox Christian and you still have so much hatred for Islam, read this book and see what the Quran says about Constantinople. وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرِيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةَ الْبَحْرَ says the Quran. Ask them, question them about the city by the sea, Constantinople. Hmm? So we are a people who are joined together on this subject of the Great War. When will the Great War start? We know that when the Great War takes place, then for us, two things that will follow after that. Number one, after the Great War, we know there's going to be the conquest of Constantinople. And we know, because we can think, that the reason why a Muslim army will conquer Constantinople is number one, so that we can return Hagia Sophia to the Orthodox Christian world. And you are smiling now. You are smiling because now you are happy in your hearts that our prophet has said, and they can't do anything about it. Our prophet has said, within seven years of the Great War, a Muslim army will conquer Constantinople. And there will be many Tur many. Um, Kurd, Kurdish Muslims in that army. There are many Arabs in that army. And that army will be led by many Turkish Muslims also, who are faithful to the Quran. When that army conquers Constantinople, goodbye to NATO. You cannot conquer Constantinople until the Great War takes place. Because the Great War is going to bring about the destruction of modern Western civilization. Please read my book, The Quran, The Great War, and the West. Please read my book, The Quran, The Great War, and the West. And you see where the Quran is telling us that in that Great War, this part of the world, from where the human beings and jinn who are both evil have an alliance together and they will explore the sky and the depths of the earth will be destroyed. So I'm going to deal with both of you, says Allah in Surah Al Rahman. Because modern Western civilization is going to be defeated in that great war. And this doesn't come from any political science department of any university. They can't do that, no. Only the Quran can tell you that in the Great War, which is coming, modern Western civilization is going to be defeated. And when modern Western civilization is defeated, goodbye to NATO. Goodbye to NATO. There's much more for me to tell you. If you are Christian, I am going to tell you 
in the future, in the lectures which will come, what is your role as a Christian in Akhiru Zaman, in the end time? I'm going to teach this to you. This is why I must counsel Armenia. Do not allow yourself to be provoked. There are those who are thirsty for war. Say to the Armenian people, do not be provoked. Do not enter into war with Azerbaijan. Stay, pre pre try to prevent a war with Azerbaijan. Because tomorrow the two people have to live together as a family. There are those who have a master plan for war. The war can begin in Azerbaijan and Armenia. The war can begin in Libya. These are the brush fires. But wherever the brush fire begins and the fighting starts, it will lead to the same conclusion. This would happen in the First World War. They planned and they planned and they planned, and eventually they were able to succeed with the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo. A flash fire, a brush fire, and it led to the Great War. Everything was planned in advance, yes. And France <laughs> did the best planning of all to ensure that there's going to be a war. Britain played a secondary role, and Russia played a secondary role, but they planned it in advance. Again, they're planning this time. And those of you who can think will realize that the masjid, the, the cathedral has been changed to a masjid at this time so it can provoke the world of Islam to support Turkey and provoke Muslims to hate the Christians, yes, to prepare a more favorable condition for that great war which is to come. I don't know whether it'll start in Libya, but things are pretty hot now in Libya. And uh, Turkey is on one side, and Egypt is on the other side. And uh, I don't know whether it's going to start in Az Azerbaijan, but July has been a hot month with clashes between Azerbaijan and Armenia. I don't know whether it's going to start in uh, Kashmir, because India is preparing to wage war on Pakistan, not the Hindu people. It's the Indian, the bloodthirsty Indian government. They want the war, okay? And when people are brainwashed, if so many Muslims can be brainwashed to support this disgraceful and shameful thing of taking a cathedral and transforming it into a masjid. So can you blame me? So many Hindus have been brainwashed to support this bloodthirsty uh, Hindu government in India? No. You could, even here in Trinidad, you have so many Muslims who are brainwashed to support a woman to rule over them. Yeah. So if it starts here, or it starts there, or it starts there, is irrelevant. What is relevant is to be able to place this event of the transformation of the cathedral to a masjid in context that it is happening on at this moment because it forms part of the master plan. This is NATO's master plan to wage war on Russia and China. And Turkey is a member state of NATO. I have just a few minutes left. Uh, let me use these few minutes now to expand upon my political analysis the implications of the, mas of the cathedral being transformed to a masjid at this time. Um, the Quran speaks about two kinds of Christians. And it is time for our Muslim young people to learn the Quran. Bismillah. Allah speaks in Surah Al-Ma'idah about both. Towards the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah, which is the fifth surah of the Quran, he says, He says, 
you will most certainly find, absolute certainty. أشد الناس عداوة للذين آمنوا اليهود. That at this time when the Quran is being revealed, as well as in time to come, that those who will be greatest in hatred, the most hateful people who have the greatest hatred for you, will be the Jews. Is this an anti-Semitic comment? You want to take <laughs> you, you want to take the Quran to court? <laughs> <laughs> the Jews will have the greatest hatred for you. And this is precisely what happened at that time when the Quran was revealed. وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا And those who are in the most upward form of shirk who were the pagan Arabs. They, were the, they had the greatest hatred for the Muslims. But Allah is saying that this is going to happen again. Not only at that time, but in the future. And today we again have the same thing. That those who are in the most, who have the greatest hatred for Muslims today are the Jews. Not all Jews, no, no, no. But generally, the Jews who support the state of Israel. They have the greatest hatred. This is not a, an anti-Semitic statement. It's just a factual statement. Yeah. Well, Latina Ashraqo. Modern Western civilization is founded on shirk. And modern West, the, those who control power, those who control the media, they have the greatest hatred for Islam. But then Allah goes on to say, That you will find at this time and in time to come that those who have the greatest love and affection for you will be those who proclaim themselves to be Christians. And this is what happened at that time. Because when we were being persecuted, we left as refugees, we went to Abyssinia. And the Christian king, the Negus of Abyssinia, he protected us. And even when Makkah went, sent a delegation to bribe him, he refused. He said, no, I will not send them back. And he protected us. This was Christianity. Stop this nonsense, this hatred you have in your heart. Well, can you be a Muslim and have that kind of hatred when this Christian king protected us? And he said, not only would this happen at that time, but in time to come. So today the Jews are once again showing the greatest hatred for us. And this is not an unfair comment. It's a factual comment. So at this time also, there will be a Christian people who will be closest in love and affection for Muslims. Who would those Christian people be? They have priests, they have the monastic way of life, and they're not an arrogant people. They don't want to rule the world. These want to rule the world, London, Washington, but they don't want to rule the world. So why don't you think my time is up? I wish I had some more time, but next week, inshallah, we'll continue. This is my opening statement to go to the Quran to tell you. This is what Allah says, that there will be a Christian people who will be closest in love and affection for you. They are listening to me now. They are listening to me now. Some of them already have tears in their eyes. And tomorrow there will be more tears in their eyes when they hear what Allah has said about them in the Quran. We pray to Allah to guide our people who are sincerely without knowledge, who are ignorant. And in their ignorance they have supported what Turkey has done. May Allah forgive them. And may Allah guide them to the right path. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.